Welcome back, Pirate Crew. It's your captain, Yeehaw Yadam, and we're back with another fantastic and exciting week of One Piece. For those of you that don't know, this weekend was the Treasure Cup in Miami, hosted by Pro Play Games, and it was an exceptional experience uh, and honestly an honor to be able to be part of the commentary team to watch such amazing games of One Piece being played. Some were very intricate and some were very troll. But that's what it's all about in a high, intense, and stressful environment that comes in with these big, big tournaments. But at the end of the day, we're out here to enjoy the game that we know and love. So it was fantastic meeting some of you, talking to some of you, and getting to just hang out and play a lot of really good One Piece. Uh, so for this video, I have it structured in a way that we'll talk about this current Treasure Cup, talk about how the Treasure Cup in Miami went, the future that's coming up in the One Piece card game, and then we'll go ahead and look at those very spicy prizes, uh, the prices of those prize cards that were given out in the Treasure Cup. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Right here we have the top 16 breakdown for the Miami event, and we have it at 50% used as Captain Kid, with eight of them sneaking in there, three red Luffy's, two Laws, two Purple Kaido, and one Doflamingo player that was able to squeeze on in there. Now, this doesn't come to um, any surprise. For those of you that watched the podcast that I held a couple weeks ago with Andrew Duvall, uh, if you don't know, he ended up winning the whole thing at the Treasure Cup in Miami. That guy's an exceptional player, and the knowledge that he has of this game, Dragon Ball, and basically every single card game he touches, is immaculate. Um, he had been talking about how he wanted to play the most consistent deck, He and he went with Yusuke's Captain Kid, what he believed is the best deck in a best-of-one format. Um, he was talking to me and expressing the fact that if it was a best-of-three, maybe he had pondered about playing Kaido, as Kaido really is favored in a best-of-three, and how Kaido has its strength, but the best of one format really, really favors the more consistent decks, and Eustace Captain Kid has the same game plan every single game. It is a fantastic deck and really bullies almost every single color at this point in time, and we really saw it by the representation that we have here. Most represented deck in the whole entire cup was the red deck. Between Luffy and Zoro, they took up a majority of the participation slots, then it was followed by Eustace Captain Kid, then uh, Kaido, then do, uh, blue, and then law. So honestly, the representation of the pie chart is not indicative of the participation, but it's a very indicative of what was, you know, powerful and what was able to win in the top tables. There was a sea of green and a sea of red, and we see it here in the top 16. So once again, congratulations to Andrew Duvall for taking it, and what a fantastic showing it was from all the green players that were there. Honestly, four of these players in top 16, they're my buddies, so... And the differences between their lists were literally one, two, or three cards. It's absolutely insane. Uh, so with that being said, let's see what's going on in the future of One Piece. And guys, it's March. The, at the time of recording this video, it's March 12th. I mean, sorry, February 12th. And March 3rd is right around the corner. And you know what that means? Pre-release. Uh, and with the pre-release, we get new sets. We get OP2, new product, new cars, new card POG. <laughs> Right, so we'll go ahead and see how that goes ahead and shakes up our meta. But not just that, the pre-release events, you know, as Bandai has done them in the past, are usually a really good spot to gain very cool and exclusive cards. So during the weekend of, or the week of March 3rd through March 9th, there will be pre-release tournaments in different stores. So go ahead and check your Bandai TCG Plus app and make sure that you check out any stores that are hosting these pre-release events because they're really, really cool really good uh, opportunity to get your hands on product that you might not have later on. So with that, you have an opportunity to buy a booster box. And with the purchase of a booster box, you will get an additional pre-release pack. Now you'll ask, you're, you're probably thinking to yourself, what is a pre-release pack? And I thought to myself too, what, what, <laughs> what is a pre-release pack? But coming from Digimon, it was very intuitive, right? So it's this little um, uh, promotional pack that has two cards within itself. In those two cards, there are 75 different types of cards that they can be, and that's gonna be commons and uncommons from the set that don't have any foiling, and they'll get a pre-release foiling on it. Now, what does that look like? Well, this is Smoker, right? But if you win the pre-release event, you get a Smoker Plus is what I'm gonna call it, or a Winner Smoker, and let's see, it'll look like this pre-release winner. If you look at the pre-release winner Luffy, very similar to that, it's gonna have this stamp on the card, but it's not gonna say winner, it'll just say pre-release. So for these cards that don't have any higher rarities or just common and uncommon, these little booster uh, packs are your opportunity to get those really cool seals. What does that mean for the market? Not really sure. Uh, we're really 
green to this sort of information. But if we look at Digimon and try to use that as an in indicator for this, the Digimon cards that were good and were pre-release stamped were five to six times more expensive than their counterparts. And you heard me right. Five to six times. And that, you know, that might not be much, right? Because if the card is co costs a dollar, it's a $5 card. But sometimes if the card is a super duper meta, super duper playable, the common will be worthless. And the pre-release stamp will be 20, 25, 30, even sometimes $40. Well, but those were cards that needed to get banned. But that's another story. Um, so certainly very lucrative to go get your hands off this. And if you're able to get a box, you get another one of it. So sounds like a plus event to me. You'll also be able to play in some sort of tournament uh, structure that is, you know, dependent on your tournament organizer. Uh, it can either be constructed or sealed, depending on what the what they go ahead and choose. But that'll be the way that you get your smoker promotional card, as well as if you win the pre-release winner smoker. So go ahead and make sure you check your Bandai TG Plus app and find those places. Sign up and make sure that you're ready for that when it comes out. So we already know that the online events went ahead and sold out within too fast <laughs> uh, but we have here the offline regionals so the offline regionals are going to be in a rotation we have carta magica and top cut taking care of the first two and then the second rotation will probably be taken over by P uh, ppg and play tcg right it just makes sense so the first two carta magica is going to go be and it's going to be held in montreal in palais de congrès i hope i you know pronounce that for all my French viewers out there, please let me know if I did, you know, some justice to that. So it'll be hosted in Montreal, in Canada. If you're able to attend it, it's going to be awesome. And if not, there is the uh, one that's going to be hosted in Illinois by Top Cut. It's going to be hosted on April 15th and April 15th, respectively, for both. Currently, for the one that's being held by Top Cut, we do not know when registration goes live. It is TB to be determined. But for Carta Magica. The first time you're able to register or start the registration process is March 2nd at 7 p.m. So go ahead and be sure to be ready. Set a reminder. Make sure you're all nice and sweated if you're going to go ahead and attend this event because it looks like these events sell out fast. So and now what the good stuff is, what we're really here for. What do these cards from the Treasure Cup will go for? It looks like a lot of money. So if you join the Treasure Cup, you get two event packs. These event packs come with one card and there are five separate cards that they can be. Each specific card is kind of bananas expensive and completely understandable, whether it be for collection value, like this this Ace card. Ace is a amazing character, one of my favorite characters from the show. So definitely would love to have this card in my hand. The art looks fantastic. I saw this card all weekend. Uh, and in terms of a competitive card, I'm not convinced, you know, it's a five for six with no counter power, but it does have the double attack feature. Um, another example of a card similar to this would be the Eustace Captain Kid promotional three drop, which is a three, four, one counter power with double attack. And that card sees absolutely no play. So I am not convinced that this will see play. You might argue that in Whitebeard it can be playable, uh, but we'll, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Either way, this card goes for 70 ish dollars. Uh, which is very, very high. You know, your entry was 30 bucks for the event. You get two packs and one pa one card in the pack already pays for your entry and some. Uh, then we also have the Jinbei. Super duper playable card and it's beautiful. I saw this one in person and it's absolutely stunning. The blue on it, uh, this picture does not do it justice. Uh, but besides it being a great looking card for collection purposes, uh, Jinbei being part of the straw hats and, obviously, and honestly, that guy's a beast. Uh, and the card is nothing short of a strong card. It is a 4 for 5 with 1k combo power. It is a 7 gray Warlords of the Sea. You know what that means. And it has an on KO effect. And on KO effects are rather deadly, right? Because this card can safely just 5-5-5 five, five, five every turn. You can summon this off of Doflamingo. And if they try to take it down, all right, bro, on KO. And here we go. So definitely a super duper great addition to the Doflamingo deck, adding more of the seven Warlords archetype for the Doflamingo to play around with. Super duper cool card, $80. This one I can justify being a little bit more expensive as its playability is just, it's just a little bit more there. And it's just consistently there. There's currently only four listings prior to it going to $150. But honestly, my guy said you to gaming. Come on, dog. <laughs> 
as as really high but respect uh and then we have sengoku a very playable card and our first black card uh op2 isn't out yet we don't have the black color and we have sengoku already it's a super strong card five for six dawn times one so it goes to seven a super great attacking number and it has a really good effect that goes along with the black archetype uh your turn give all your opponent's characters minus two cost broken uh, as we reduce costs, we go ahead and make it easier for our cards to go ahead and get their uh, KOs and their knockouts. So it's going to be a really good addition. Its stat line is really good. You can argue the fact that it doesn't have combo power is a negative side, but it looks like the black cards in general lack counter power for that same reason that their effects are just so absolutely devastating. This card is currently going for $62, so it's around the same price as Ace. Again, expensive. Then we have Uda, a 5 for 6. Great stat numbers, no Dawn effect, no counter, but it's on plays. You get to add one Rested Dawn from your deck. Whether this card is playable in Kaido or not, it is a really cool addition to the purple archetype. It's another Uda card. And if you all saw the film red, come on, look at this. This is an absolutely amazing card uh, sitting at $70 at this time. And then we have Bart Bartolomeo, who he's a super cool character. Honestly, I love this guy in the show. He's super duper dope. I just laugh because everyone else is like $70, $60, and Bartolomeo is just 30 bucks, man. How, what a shame. If you open this one, you're not feeling too, too great. Uh, I haven't even read his effect, if I'm being honest, but end of your turn, you may arrest this character, set one of your film characters other than Bartolomeo as active. If the film archetype explodes, maybe playable? I don't know. All I know is that the green film cards really start to see their place when the film uh, green cards come out and it starts to get a home within law, right? Red, green law starts to really pop off using the green Nami, the green uh, Robins, and the green Brooks to really make some really bizarre plays. So if that deck starts finding a home, I'm trying to make a, you know, a justification for Bartolomeo, but it is an exceptionally stunning looking card. So any collector might want to add this to their collection. For 35 bucks, honestly, seems like the most reasonably priced one out of all of them. So, can't feel too bad about that. So, yeehaw. What about those darn prize cards? <sighs> Here we go. So, Zoro. Uh, you get this for getting top 8. The, the pricing structure is bizarre, right? I'm going to start naming some. If you don't know what the structure is, I'll name it here. And you'll see how weird it is with me. So, if you get to top 8, you get... Rowan or Zoro. You get it. It's, this card looks insane. Uh, you know, a couple of my buddies were able to get it. So I saw it in person and it looks stunning. It is textured. The, the, the blue in the back has like these weird little dots and it's just... I want one for myself, but it's out there, man. It really is. So uh, this card currently, I can't see any listings on TCG Player. I was seeing some listings on eBay from in Canadian currency. I think it's about 4 to 5k Canadian, which roughly translates to 3.5 to $4,000 US, I think, or a little bit less, like 3,000 to 3.5 maybe, uh, which is still a ton of money for a card. But once again, it is a prize card and it should be treated with that same level of respect. So I completely understand it and it is gorgeous, gorgeous. But three, expect $3,000 if you can find a seller, if you really want this card. And you offer a seller 2000 2500 I think you might be in a good spot for a long-term hold. But that is just a lot of money to spend on cardboard. You know what I mean? It's hard to denote these investment prices. Like, imagine, I can talk about the penny stocks in terms of cardboard. I can talk about the parallels. and But now I'm talking about racks. And it becomes a little bit more difficult to justify spending those numbers. But if you're willing, you have the money, you, you like the Zoro card... Uh, definitely. Two to 2,500 seems like it, the place where it seems reasonable. Uh, anything higher is a little bit rougher uh, for this card. Then you have Tony Tony Chopper. Now, Tony Tony Chopper sitting at $800 is baffling to me. It's unbelievably baffling to me. This card is, is beautiful. It's a beautiful card, and it's an accomplishment. It is a prize card. Again, treat prize cards with the respect they deserve. But I think you got this for top 64. So yes, when you put in respect, 64 to 500 player event is not easy to make. But for those of you that are confident, skilled card game players, it's a very good benchmark to have. You know, you can definitely, if you're confident, you're watching the channel, you're practicing, you're, you know, you're going hard. I'm confident that you can get this chopper. 
uh, in comparison to the Zora. The Zora and the Luffy are much, much more difficult. Uh, but that justifies, you know, if there's 64 for each event, we had one in Long Beach, had one in Niagara, had one in Miami. We're now going to have one in Las Vegas and in Texas. So there's five times 64. So five times six, it's about 30, about 300 and something ish cards. So let's say like 350 if we're rounding highly because the side events also give this. So let's go all the way up to 400. There are 400 of these cards in the US at the time of the end of the month. Uh, I don't know if $800 is correct. I, I know it is a fan favorite card. He's part of the Straw Hat crew. It is a playable card. It is meta. But to me, this card seems closer to four to 500, maybe even less. I'm currently, the way that I would want to pick up this chopper is I would say a playset for a grand. Seems like the most reasonable, but that is really, really low balling some people. And it doesn't seem like people would go that, that low. I don't think it'll go that low, but if it does, A, I'm down. Uh, also, just note that this same chopper, if you guys went ahead and grabbed the magazine promotional product that Bandai went out on premium pan, on the premium Bandai website, it's the same exact chopper. It's going to get a reprint in about four months, and it's a little samurai form. So it's, it'll look different. It'll still be nice, but that might also drive the price of this chopper down as it'll get more and more reprints in the future. And then we have Usopp. Usopp currently sitting one listing for $2,000. You got this Usopp if you were able to make top uh, 16. So we have top eight, top 64, top 16. The Usopp, again, similar to the Zoro, textured background, gorgeous card. Is it worth 2,000? No shot, <laughs> no shot. Uh, I can see this going for about a thousand dollars. Seems like a pretty reasonable amount for this card. Um, but once again, prize cards, they're just so hard to dictate. You have to find the right seller, have to find the right pricing, someone that you trust. So it's very difficult to get your hands on these cards and find something that you feel comfortable uh, with selling. So obviously if you're looking for these cards, being at these events is key. You had to be going around. I know people, I saw people selling this chopper for $300 at the event. I saw it in front of me. So as, as you can see here, it's 800, but if you have 300 bucks in front of someone, you can say, hey, here's 300 bucks. Some people will take it, man. Uh, as the Zoro, a little bit diff more difficult to find, you know, a nice sell here or the Usopp, but could be done as well. And lastly, we have the cereal Monkey D. Luffy that sold today, 9 p.m., 7,500 US. Now, this Luffy... You're going to think to yourself, did you get first? Did you get second? No, Luffy was the same placing as Zoro. Why? Top 8 got a Luffy and a Zoro. Top 16 got an Usopp, a Luffy, and a Zoro. Oh, well, no, no. Top 16 just got the Usopp. And then top 64 got Chopper. So why is Luffy so expensive? I know the serialized number is really, really cool. It's something that you know that there's a limited amount of, and obviously it's going to drive the price up. But just understand, this card is going to have I believe, what is it, 700 of it being printed? So over the course of time, I do expect this to go down within the near future. But then if the game lives, if it has collector value within the long term, I then it would it should go really, really up. Uh, and I think that's what people are trying to do. They're investing in these really high rarity cards because they don't know what the future of this game holds. But if there is longevity, these very expensive prize cards can see some pretty crazy increases. So I don't denote anyone for doing those sort of things. But with that being said, guys, that's the treasure cup. That's the one piece. And that's this week's news about one piece. So thank you so much. If you've made it to this point in the video, leave a comment down below that says, I can't think of anything. The one piece is real. Just do the one piece is real meme. <laughs> uh, and uh, if, any, if you like the video, if you like the content, make sure to leave a like. Comment if you have any other questions, anything that I missed, anything that you want to talk about that you think I missed. And as well, if you're liking this content, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And as always, I will see y'all on the next one. Peace. Oh, I didn't click it. Cringe. <laughs>